How to choose a motor for your DIY CNC project. Okay, question I get a lot is servo or stepper? Servos, generally you will see, have advantages over steppers. They're more expensive, but they're more energy efficient, they're quieter, they run smoother, they're cooler because they don't use as much energy, they maintain torque at higher RPM, um, but, you know, steppers are actually better at holding a fixed position. So it looks like a servo is a clear winner over steppers. Well, let's just change the slide here. Let's say servo or closed loop stepper. When you compare a servo to a closed loop hybrid stepper, uh, it looks a little different. So actually, both systems are quiet running because these closed loop systems, you can, you can dial up the micro stepping quite a bit. And uh, you can make a closed loop stepper very, very quiet. You can make it very smooth. So uh, basically, the moral of the story is, let's go to the next slide. If money's no object and you want the very best of the best, go with the servo. Uh, Clear Path from Technic is a great choice. There'll be a description, or in the description of this video, there'll be a link. You can check that out. But if you can live with 80% of the performance of a servo uh, at a third of the price, go with a closed loop stepper. And I think that's what the vast majority of the DIY CNC uh, builders are going to go with. And Stepper Online, I believe, is a great place to begin your search uh, when you're shopping for these products. There's a description in the, in the, or there's a link in the description of this video. You can check it out. And uh, full disclosure, these guys actually support my YouTube channel. So if you follow the link in this description, that actually helps me. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. Um, but I think most DIY guys are going to be happy with closed loop steppers. One thing I will say is don't buy open loop steppers. They're cheaper, but uh, here's the deal. There's no feedback and you have this risk of losing steps. What happens is, is you either have to buy motors that are way bigger than what you really need or you have to dial back your feed rates because uh, you know when you start losing steps you're you're done you're all messed up uh, most of the problems I've had working with DIY CNC are related to lost step problems you know a closed loop system they're more reliable and they'll generate an alarm if they lose steps open loop systems they don't generate alarms, they'll lose steps, they'll mess up your part, and they'll just keep running like everything's fine. So even though they're cheaper, I would not buy an open loop stepper system unless you're on a real tight budget, you know, then it's a different story. But if you can afford it, go to a closed loop system. So how to choose your motor. If you call up the applications engineers at any of the companies that sell this stuff, uh, they're going to ask you a bazillion questions. The whole thing's going to seem really complicated. And from their point of view, it is. They're, they're, they're trying to address a wide array of applications. And, uh, you know, you need to consider a lot of variables to do that correctly. But here's the thing. DIY CNC, in this particular uh, arena, there's a large margin for error. So if you get motors that are too big, it's not a problem. Get motors that are a little bit too small, uh, it's probably still going to work, but you just won't have the speed that you maybe really want. But you can still make it work. And this is kind of the difference. So the application engineers, they the way they approach the problem when you're selecting motors, there's a certain mass that you want to move at a certain velocity. There's a certain amount of friction, uh, acceleration. So they they begin with the end in mind, and they work backwards to pick a motor that works. Most DIY guys, you pick the motor that you think is going to work, and then you just alter the uh, kinematics of the machine to match the motors that you chose. Frame size. So there are a lot of different frame sizes when you're talking about motors. Uh, it's kind of intimidating. But the vast majority of them you're not going to deal with. You're probably only ever going to use two or three of them. And most all DIY CNC applications, you're, you're going to either be a NEMA 23, probably a NEMA 23 or a NEMA 34. Occasionally, you may want to use a NEMA 24. And we'll talk about this a little bit more shortly. 
NEMA 23 is going to be the most popular and it's going to work well for the X and Y axis on uh, most milling projects. So your tables, your X, and your Y, uh, NEMA 23 is a good choice for them. NEMA 23 is going to work well for the X and the Z on, on most lathes. Most of your lathe conversions, NEMA 23 is going to work great for both axes. NEMA 23 is going to work well for the z-axis of a smaller milling machine. So if you're dealing with like one of these little mini mills or something from Shareline, uh, you'll probably be okay with a NEMA 23 on the z-axis. If you're working on a bigger milling machine, one of these larger benchtop mills, you're probably going to be putting a NEMA 34 motor on there for the z-axis because you need more power to move the head. It's, it's heavier, it weighs more, there's more friction. Uh, you'll probably be shopping for a NEMA 34 motor for that application. Also, you may want to think about NEMA 24 motors for the X and the Y axis because NEMA 24 is just a little bit bigger than NEMA 23. You can get a slightly more powerful setup that way. And we'll talk more about 23 and 24 frame sizes in a moment. DIY routers. Most of these DIY router kits are going to work great with a NEMA 23 motor on all axes. You might want to pick a little heavier motor for the Z axis than you do for the rest of the axes, but chances are NEMA 23 is going to work great for you there. One thing you want to do, just look at the kit that you bought, whatever conversion kit that you're using or router kit or whatever. Make sure you buy motors that fit the uh, brackets that came with your kit. And here again, uh, a lot of these bench mill conversion kits you can get either with a NEMA 23 or a NEMA 34 set up on the z-axis so just make sure you know what you got before you start buying your components. Frame size here with the NEMA 23 and NEMA 24 nine times out of ten they are probably going to be interchangeable so what you'll see uh, up top is a NEMA 23 down below is a NEMA 24. This boss this locating boss in the middle they're the same size on both frames. They're both 38.1 millimeters. What changes is the hole-to-hole -hole spacing. The NEMA 23, you'll see it's 47 millimeters hole-to-hole. -hole. Down here on the NEMA 24, you'll see the spacing is 50 millimeters, so it's just a little bit bigger. Uh, you'll probably be able to make a NEMA 24 motor fit in anywhere you can use a NEMA 23. You may have to open these holes up a little bit or you know do a little bit of you know, drilling and grinding and modification. Maybe, uh, maybe not, but chances are you'll be able to make the 24 fit where the 23s would normally go. It's just something you need to be aware of when you're shopping for motors. So torque, another question. I'm going to use this chart from Stepper Online. So this range here, 170 to 280, what's this good for? This is going to work great for these small benchtop machines like the Shareline mill or uh, you know something like that. This range is going to work well for a, a small you know benchtop lathe like these little seven inch lathes. Uh, these motors motors you know under 300 inches ounce inches you'll you'll be fine. And of course your DIY CNC router kits motors in this size range will work well. Uh, for those types of applications. Now, slide on down the table here a little bit. This kind of 400 to upper 500 range. These size, uh, these motors are going to work well for larger bench lathes like the, the 10 by 22 or the 10 by 30 lathes. You can use motors of this size. It will work good on X and Z. These motors will also work well for the uh, x-axis and the y-axis of your bench top mills. Uh, you should have no problems picking motors in this size range. Now, this part of the table down here, this is where you want to be for the z-axis on your bench mills. Um, and depending on how fast you want the machine to go, if you're using uh, gas props or springs or counterbalances to help lift the head, anywhere in this range will will probably work. I see a lot of people go with the 1200 and that's fine. I went with a larger motor for my conversions but 
Uh, I've seen people use these smaller motors and make them work too. So th this is the range you want to be in. 1200 is probably a safe bet for the Z-axis on your bench mills. Power supplies. How much voltage do you need? This question comes up a lot. And this can be really complicated. There's formulas, but generally here's what you can do. Look at the driver. It's going to have a specified voltage range like this one. The range is 24 to 50 volts. Just shoot for the middle. And here's the deal. So higher voltage will give you more speed if you need it, but it's also going to give you more heat. So that's not desirable. So just shoot for the middle. So this, this guy right here, I'd use a 36 volt power supply. It would work fine. Wattage, that's the next question you want to ask. So these uh, switching power supplies are usually labeled like this. It'll, it'll say like 436. So this is a 400 watt, 36 volt power supply. How much wattage do you need? Stepper Online has a nice little part of their website, helps you figure this out. But here's what you do. Formula that I took right off their website. P equals N times I times V times 1.2. So your wattage requirement is equal to the number of stepper motors times the rate of current of each motor times the driving voltage times 1.2. That's, that's giving you a 20% margin of error. So here's an example. You have three motors. Those motors are each rated at 3 amps. You're running a 36-volt power supply. So this is what you would get. Three motors times 3 amps times 36 volts times 1.2 equals 388 watts. So what that means is you could use a 36-volt 400 watt power supply to drive all three motors. Now here again, this is a, uh, there's a little bit of a margin of error built into this. If you're using one power supply to drive multiple motors, you might get away with uh, cutting it a little bit closer. And the reason is it's very, it's not likely that you're going to run all the motors at their max current at the exact same time. It's unlikely. The other side of this is, is if you're running a setup where you have one power supply per driver, you absolutely want to make sure that you have a sufficient margin of error because if you're using a switching power supply and you run out of, you, let's just call it a brownout. If you have a brownout, you run out of power you're, on your driver, your driver can do really weird uh, erratic things and it'll make your life frustrating. So anyway, there you go. There's the rule of thumb for voltage and wattage on your power supplies. And finally, uh, in the description of this video, I'm going to throw some links. These are companies that I think I've called them good people. I've dealt with all these different companies, and they're all great, and uh, feel very comfortable recommending them to people. And as I sit and look at this, I realize that I also like companies that use blue logos. Didn't know that until just now. All right, thanks for watching this video. I hope you found this helpful. And... Uh, you know, have fun working on your DIY CNC conversion projects.